Hello everyone, this is Jerry Pacey, Peplum Refuge Product Manager. The topic I want to discuss today is the software Vision Configurator for the PGV. Vision Configurator is a software program used to configure the PGV. This software will allow the user to display and modify various sensor parameters via the program's interface. It also contains status messages, live data, and the ability to take a snapshot. The user experience is simple and straightforward. To become more familiar with the PGV itself, I'd recommend looking at the video in the description box below, which is a general overview of the product. So the first thing I'd like to begin with is identifying what is needed to connect the PGV to Vision Configurator. The main component here is the PGV read head. We have a laptop running Windows, two converter cables, and a sample card. In order to connect the PGV to the laptop, we will use the converter cable. The PGV is available in a few different protocols, and depending on which one you have will determine which converter cable is used. We have one converter for bus communications and one for RS-45. For this demo, we are using a PGV with RS-45. We also have some sample cards here to demo. To get the software running, we'll first need to install Vision Configurator to the PC. There is a link below that will lead you to the install file directly from our website. Once you go through the standard Windows install process, you'll have an icon for Vision Configurator on your desktop. Let's double click the icon to start the software. The initial screen you will see has a few key elements. What we want to focus on is in the device family section. This is where we will select which device we are connecting to Vision Configurator. Make sure you're on the Vision option. At the bottom, make sure you select PGV under device type. Within that same row, make sure that the correct interface type is selected. In this case, as I said, I'm using an RS-45 interface. Now that we have this set up, let's physically connect the PGV to the laptop. The RS-45 converter is what we use to pair the read head to the PC. You want the connection to look something like this. The V19 cable connects to the connector on the read head. The USB coming from the converter will connect to the USB port on any of your PC. Once you connect the USB to the PC, you will see Windows begin to install the USB device driver, which is another standard Windows operation. After that's completed, maybe a few seconds, you will see a prompt telling you the driver software was successfully installed. At this point, we go back to the software. Click the Refresh COM ports button at the bottom. Then in the PGV row above, make sure to select the COM port you are plugged into from the drop down menu. Once these settings are completed, you can click the OK button at the bottom. You will then see a new screen pop up which is the main window of Vision Configurator. This is good. That means we are now connected. This is where you can change input and output functions, adjust resolution, and see a visual representation of what the read head is scanning when it's in action. And this is just the beginning. Let's start by going over some of the options we have. The two main features we can select are within the image and position view tabs. The image view is extremely useful, especially for initial setup of an application. Here you can take a screenshot and the software will output a picture of what the PGV is scanning. Let's give that a try. This is where we want to introduce the code tape, color lines, or whatever the PGV is scanning. I have a sample card here with the data matrix tag that I'll use for this demo. Once we have the PGV aligned properly with the sample tape, Let's select Get Image. This will start the screenshot process. After a few seconds, you'll see a picture load in the image view window. This should be exactly what the PGV is scanning. In my demo, you'll see a snapshot of the data matrix tag. This picture can be a very valuable tool for troubleshooting. There are situations where the code tape may be unintentionally moved or damaged after installation. Taking this screenshot will allow the user to view any problematic areas of the tape. Another great feature is the ability to analyze colored lines. It's important to understand that with color, the human eye and a camera may detect differently. Taking a screenshot of the color line removes this concern. If we refer back to my screenshot of the data matrix tag, you'll notice there is a blue tape strip. If we click on the show detected color drop down box, you can select which color you're using. In my case, I will select blue. Referring to the color legend, below the drop down menu box, you can see that the pink color highlights the blue strip. This means that the PGV has successfully detected that blue line. This is very good. If your application includes something that is shiny or reflective, maybe a shiny floor, 
Then this feature will also show a bright blue reflection highlighted over the area. In some cases, you can actually see the reflection from the camera. All of this information is very valuable in optimizing your application. If you right-click the image, you will see a click menu that is also very useful. When taking a screenshot, the user may want to save the image to the PC to inspect later. You can do that here by selecting Save Image. Next, let's move on to the Position View tab. This feature is also equally valuable along with the Image View because the user can ensure that their alignment is ideal. With the sample card still lined up with the PGV, let's click Start Request. This begins the scanning process and initiates the software to immediately begin to output positional data in the line data screen. In my demo, I have the PGV scanning a data matrix tag, which will provide X and Y axis position, 360 degrees of angular feedback, and a unique tag number. All of this information is shown live in this view. As you move the PGV read head either back and forth or up and down, you'll see the live X and Y positional information change. If you rotate the PGV, you will then see the live angular feedback provided. At all times though, you will see the unique tag number below the graphic. This live feedback is consistent if the PGV is scanning color lines, code tape, control codes, or any of those combinations. All the information is provided and is shown in this view. The user can make that the Y value is close to zero. This will ensure that the read head is not installed too far to the left or even to the right. At the very least, it will familiarize the user with how the PGV interacts with these tracking components without the need of a PLC initially. While we're in the position view, you will also see a window to the right of line data. This window is where further information like lane count, error information, and also status bits are located. The window below labeled control is where the user can configure the PGV. Since the PGV can detect multiple lanes, we have the option to select which lane we want the software to output the information. This can be the right, left, or even the first lane that the PGV detects, which is first lane found. If we are using colored lines for a demo, then the color must be selected under the color selection drop down menu. Just like with the data matrix tag before, the user will see a graphic of the color line that is being scanned. Both lane and color selection can be changed on the fly. In order to make changes to the main control panel, which is the lower section of the window, the user will need to stop the request. The four tabs in the main control panel include options to customize the PGV to your application. The first tab, sensor information, simply displays the device data such as serial, model number, firmware version, and also the product name. This information is read only. The next tab, common, has three side tabs. The top of the three, communication, is where the user can make changes to the read head address, the baud rate, and toggle the bus termination. An additional highlight of the PGV is the digital inputs and outputs. For the particular RS-45 version, we have two inputs and two outputs. Both are configurable. This leads us to the middle tab labeled input and output. Here the user can select several options for the function. The drop down menu will show all the available choices which range from overspeed to lane selection. The last tab labeled internal is simply to adjust the time lock parameter. The PGV will lock out from use in the software after a set time. All that is needed is a simple power cycle to allow the device to reconnect. This pretty much sums up the common tab. The next tab in the main row is measurement which has two side tabs. The first of the two, resolution and offset, will allow the user to adjust the resolution of the PGV output data. By default, the PGV outputs positional information in one millimeter resolution and angular feedback in one degree increments. The drop down menu for each of these settings will allow the user to lower or raise the resolution. For some applications, it may be necessary to compensate for an offset. This is no problem because we can adjust the X and the angle offset in the bottom section of this tab. The last side tab for measurement is position behavior. This section allows the user to specify values for some of the status outputs. If the PGV encounters a no position, we can adjust the output value to a specific number or have it output the last valid position. The same action can be done for angle. As for a status error for X or Y position, the user can select again a specified value, last valid value, or by default, the error number. The last main tab is code band and optics. Here the user can define the PGV lane width and color selection. This will ensure the PGV is decoding the lane that it's actually scanning. The bottom setting is for toggling between data matrix tag recognition, 
By default, of course, the PGV will recognize the data matrix tags. The last portion of the software to discuss is the top menu bar. Like many software programs, there's File, View, and Help. Under File, the user can load or save a job file. The job file is the exported settings on the PGV. Any changes that were made in the main control panel must be saved in order to remain on the device after a power cycle. The quickest way to save is by using the Save Settings button in the far left panel. Within the menu bar, there's also an Administration drop-down menu. The most useful option here is Create Reader Programming Code. When the user selects this option, it brings up another window where we can select and print out external code cards. These external code cards are basically the alternative to using Adventure Configurator. Once printed, these cards are used to configure the PGV with many of the same options that we've covered in this video. After a simple button configuration on the PGV, it will scan the cards and then save the settings. These cards are useful for situations where maybe connecting to a laptop is not ideal. Before we conclude, I have one more tip. When the user has completed their task with Vigit Configurator and saved the settings, all that we have to do is click on the Disconnect button on the left-hand panel. At this point, below the menu bar, there should be an Offline Mode title in red. This indicates that the user has successfully disconnected and the PGV is safe to remove from the converter cord set. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to contact us or leave something below in the comments section. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the next one. Have a good day.